You're listening to the Signal Daily. Hello, I'm Manaswini, your host for the Signal Daily podcast. This is the episode for 15th May 2024. Our two stories for this episodes are: first up, we have OpenAI's launch of its new AI model, GPT-40. We talk about the new features and why it is both alarming and intriguing at the same time. Next up, we are talking about the surge in ghost shopping malls in India. We are also joined by Soumya Gupta, senior editor at the Core and the Signal, who shares some insights on what actually works for malls. I'll be honest with you. When I watched the Academy Award-winning movie Her, starring Joaquin Phoenix and Scarlett Johansson, I really couldn't have fathomed that there could be a possibility of achieving. such a realistic level of ai voice assistance i mean let's be real alexa cortana and siri don't really cut loose but i just saw the live stream event for open ai's new launch the new ai model gpt40 which according to the company's chief technology officer meera murathi can process images texts and videos better along with interacting with people by voice in real time i am very 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 alarmed and creeped out but at the same time quite fascinated as researchers tried to demonstrate the capabilities of the new model they showed that people can interrupt the new voice feature while talking to it unlike the currently available voice assistants it's also capable of real time language translation and it can respond with a range of emotiveness so it's kind of conversational and it's about bringing fluidity in interactions instead of simply throwing prompts at the voice assistant which is what we've been used to so far Another interesting feature is the image capabilities in ChatGPT where you can take a photo and show ChatGPT what you're talking about and converse with it. Very sci-fi like, isn't it? But this only means that the AI competition is heating up like never before. So will you be able to access these features? Well, yes, they are available to all ChatGPT users including those who are on the free plan. Previously GPT-4 class models were paywall but as the CEO of OpenAI Sam Altman tweeted and I quote we want to put great AI tools in the hands of everyone end quote Sounds altruistic but this decision is likely to have been motivated by the fact that OpenAI's web traffic has been plateauing after the initial rush meaning it's still not as mainstream as it wants to be which is what the Microsoft backed AI company is ultimately aiming for I mean Google has been the go-to web search engine for the longest time but OpenAI is not just trying to ask Google it's also trying to shift the traditional mode of web searches towards a voice assistant powered search replete with image and video based interactions as Axios points out the expectations from Apple Siri Amazon's Alexa Microsoft's Cortana were exactly this but it kind of tanked at some point It'll be interesting to see if OpenAI can make voice assistants cool again or perhaps rev up the interest in voice assistants. I say this because as the New York Times reported, there are murmurs about Apple planning something big for Siri, which will be revealed at Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference in June this year. Siri could be integrated with generative AI for a smoother user experience. Plus, OpenAI made sure to launch its new model right before the Google I/O conference which was scheduled for 14th May at the time of recording this podcast that event hadn't even begun but a range of new AI product launches are being expected from Gemini's team so follow the signal for more updates on this for our second segment we are going to bring you deep dives on stories from the world of technology business policy and anything that leaves you with food for thought When was the last time you visited a mall? Because I certainly can't recall. Nowadays, if I do go, it's usually to catch a movie. But it seems I'm not the only one skipping out on mall shopping. Malls all over India are starting to feel like ghost towns, with empty stores and hardly any people around. And no, my conclusion is not based on assumptions. Latest findings by Knight Frank suggest that there's been a surge in ghost shopping malls in India. According to the recent report the number of what they call go shopping centers basically malls that are 40% or more vacant had shot up by 59% in just one year across India's top 8 metro cities 
we are talking about over 13 million square feet of completely empty abandoned retail space and get this that vacant space has resulted in losses valued at around 800 million dollars in 2023 alone even india's largest mall owner nexus select trust is feeling the heat with 17 malls under its belt it's concerned because its fashion stores which drive most of its revenue aren't making enough sales But before we dive deeper into why malls are dying, let's first understand what a thriving mall looks like. The first example that pops into my head is Gurugram's famous Ambience Mall. This place opened up in 2007 and can handle over a million people. It's packed with more than 300 international and national stores and has a massive parking space. Plus with a 98.7% occupancy rate, It's also got a 9 screen PVR multiplex, a fun city, an ice skating rink, and even an amusement park. Seriously, what more could you want from a mall, right? In fact, even the Delhi based Select City Pop Mall is another excellent example. Since its launch in 2007, it's been a hot spot in Saket, South Delhi. It hosts a mix of international, which is around 17%, and local brands across 500,000 square feet of space. with big names like H&M, Zara and Decathlon plus a six screen cinema and food court it's got everything you need and more recently even Apple opened up one of its first physical stores in Select City Walk Mall and both these malls are almost always packed with customers but then there's a flip side to this as well a different kind of mall these are the ones that are practically empty no big anchor stores no cinema no food courts and definitely no crowds So why are malls turning into ghost towns? It's not just about people choosing online shopping over brick and mortar stores. A big reason is simply bad management. Take for example the SRS Mall in Faridabad. Back in 2004, it was the place to be with all the cool brands and a PVR theater. But now it's empty and closed down. Why you ask? Well, that's because the owners might have been up to some shady business, allegedly scamming investors out of a lot of money. But you know, it's not just bad management; it's also bad planning and allocation. Often, mall developers are in a hurry to break even. So, what ends up happening is that they lease out spaces without much thought, resulting in a random mix of tenants. Like you'll see a food joint next to a high-end clothing store. with no clear zones or organization and sometimes they might even divide spaces into smaller units just to make a quick buck sure it helps meet their immediate financial goals but in the longer run it's not the best strategy especially if they want to attract the big local and international brands however to understand this a little better i reached out to somya gupta senior editor and mumbai bureau chief at the core and the signal here's what she had to say The story with India's malls is a larger story of consumption in India. It's linked to the slowdown of mass consumption in the country uh, that has been going on since before the pandemic. The one set of consumers who have been spending more consistently year on year are premium end consumers who tend to be richer, who tend to be in the cities. They're also the ones that don't necessarily rely on malls for their shopping trips. They have options to shop everywhere. in all sorts of formats so malls are no longer their go to in the way that they used to be in the 2000s for everyone else in smaller cities and small towns and the rest of the country discretionary spends are being cut they don't have the kind of disposable income that they used to to go and shop and spend in a mall that said a uh, real estate is also a cyclical business so land prices and property prices go up go down rent agreements are signed again on higher or lower prices in the pandemic rents had crashed because malls were shut and uh, there was a lockdown going on that meant that mall developers were losing money because their tenants were not paying them any rent what has happened since the pandemic ended is that the developers want to recoup the cost or rather recoup the lost revenue from the pandemic years so rents have risen up sharply that has also affected mall tenants including large uh, retailers who tend to be anchor tenants and anchor tenant is the largest store or a uh, retailer usually in the ground floor of a mall it's the one that brings in the maximum number of footfalls and sales for the mall what we saw in the et report about nexus malls which is the country's largest mall operator is that 
the most common type of anchor tenant, which is fashion retailers, are anyway struggling with a decline in demand. They're not able to come up with the kind of sales that they were able to from before the pandemic. Plus, you add to that the issue of rising rents. And now you have a situation of potential distress where malls are not able to grow, neither are their tenants. Of course, the situation will affect grade B or grade C malls in smaller cities where we already know the discretionary spends are being cut. The solution to all this is that mall developers will now have to start thinking about new ways to use the space that they own. If you have a building with commercial property in it, if you have a space, a commercial property that's in a prime location, in a city where an economy is thriving or at least coming back to life, you may not necessarily be able to run a mall in it. You might be able to convert it into a hotel, into office space, into a combination of many other commercial purposes. Common jargon used by real estate developers in this is called mixed-use retail. So you may have a mall in a part of the property and something else running in the rest of it. Besides, the other problem that malls are facing is that cinemas are also getting affected since the pandemic. Just today, we received, just this week, PVR Inox released its results where they've stepped into losses. Cinemas tend to also act as anchor tenants for a large number of malls. They replace the department store chain or the fashion retailer on the ground floor as the most important occupant of a mall, bringing in the most footfalls. How many times have we gone to a mall because we know a PVR or uh, some other cinema chain exists there? When all these kinds of anchor tenants go through a collective distress, that's when malls end in a situation as we're seeing today. If you like listening to The Signal Daily, please show us some support. Rate us and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. We'd love to hear what you have to say about this podcast. So feel free to shoot an email at hello at thesignal.co. The episode was researched, written and produced by Shorbury and me, Manaswini. Edited by Dinesh Narayanan. Mastered and mixed by Yash Hewe. You can catch this podcast every morning on Spotify, Apple, Amazon Prime Music, Google Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts. We are the signal.co on Instagram, LinkedIn and Twitter.